this tutorial I'm going to create this simple uh, bracket made out of sheet metal. So I'm going to start by going Control N uh, for a new file and select the isometric template. So um, I can do this in a couple of ways. First would be just to draw a tab. So we'll start by drawing a rectangle and Control H takes me through, so I've hit the F3 key to lock it. I'm just going to come out here somewhere and put that in. So that's um, 60 wide. So hit the tab key, go around, um, and I'm going to leave it at that. And then put a dimension on here, or I can just pick up on this line here and specify that I want that to be 80. And because I've connected it to the coordinate system, it's going to lock in there. So we unlock the plane and rotate it around. And as you can see, it's 1.5 mil thick. So we're now sort of coming off there. So um, if I pick on the edge, I can go and create a flange. So we want this um, to be measured from the um, inside. And we want it to be material outside as well. So we've got the option here. So it's just going to increase by material thickness. So that wants to be 40. And then we want to create another flange on the edge here. And for this one, we want it to be uh, measurement outside and material inside when that wants to be 40 so um, what I didn't change was the uh, bend radius so if we go to tools and variables you'll see the bend radius here is set to 1 that needs to be 4 And you'll see the bends change to suit. So um, now that I've created that, we need to create the hems at each end. So if I go to the hem command and pick up on that edge there, go to my options, change that to be an open flange. Um, so inside radius is 3.5. Flange length needs to be 10, so that also needs to be changed to bend outside as well. And then right mouse click to finish. So then we'll need to do one at the other end. Changing the settings again, I could have saved it and um, had it as an option to um, just select off the drop down. And then we want it bend outside, so it's just extending out past the end of the um, face. So we've got um, a couple of holes in the top, so we go to the hole command. And if we go into settings, these are um, 12 diameter. Not added that to my drawing, but let's just take that. And we want to have it through next. So I'm going to just lock it onto that plane with the F3 key. Control H takes me through to the sketch plane. Shift Control, right mouse click allows me to um, pan across. So I'm going to drop one in there, hover over the edge, and then we can get the alignment up. So they are going to stay in line with each other. And then we can go to Spark Dimension and place that on there. So I'm going to lock this dimension um, and that needs to be 30 and then when I change this one wait got the wrong edge so um, as you can see the arrow is pointing down so this outside face is going to be the one that moves so we don't want that we want to move the inside hole and that needs to be 15 and you'll see that both holes move because that dimension there is locked 
and you can see that by the fact that it's red. So let's just type those PMI for the moment. Um, so we've got a cutout that drops down on the inside and across here, so it sort of drops across that face. So I'll create a um, rectangle or center, block the plane. And I'm going to start here. Um, so the width is going to be 12 to the left, so it'll be 12 to the right as well because I've done it by center. So 24 for that value, hit the tab key, takes me through, and that's a 10 mil width and zero rotation. So, um, oh, you can see I've drawn that on the wrong face. Um, so I can just fix that up. So there's the sketch that I've just created. I can use my steering wheel and just snap to a key point here, put it on the top face and hit the escape key and then I can go to the cut command. Um, so it sees this edge as a boundary. So if I hold the control key down, I can select both and right mouse click to accept it. And then we want to come down 12 mil and right mouse click to accept it. Uh, then we have a um, couple of cutouts on the side. So these ones in here, 10 by 10. So I want to lock to that plane there. And if I can find the center point, I can just sort of drop in here like so. I'll put that size in as exact. I want to snap to there. Likewise, on this side, I could do a mirror if I wanted to. But I should be able to hover over there to get that size setting for me. And you can see that the two are going to stay in line with each other. So um, that should be 10, so that's okay. So we'll make this one 10, and because I snap to the edge. Just lost our connection, so I will go and connect that to there. Change that to 10. Then add a dimension on this side as well. changed. So we can unlock the plane and click in that area, hold the control key down and click on that one as well and we can just drop this through. Um, doesn't matter about the distance because it's not held. It's just a means of going through. So finally we have a um, drawn cutout in here. So I'll start by drawing the circle. So it's going to be an 8mm um, hole through the middle. So lock the plane, come off that center point. 8mm diameter and dimension from there to the coordinate system. And that needs to be 16 mil. So that gives me my um, hole. As I said, that needs to be 8. So we can go up to our drawn cutout. And if we go to our options, um, I want a taper angle of 30 degrees. And the die radius needs to be 2 mil. So click OK on there, click on the circle. As you can see, it's going in the wrong direction, so I'll just click on the arrow, and you can see that it's dropping through, creating those values. Depth needs to be 4, and then just um, right mouse click to finish.
So you can see that we've now sort of completed that reasonably quickly. Um, sheet metal, quite often you'll want to create the flat pattern. So we'll go into the tools tab, click flatten. And the next step is to define which face is going to be fixed. So we'll say that one, and then you've got um, the option of orientation. So on it coming to the left. And that goes through and creates the flat pattern. Um, so you can see the overall size is listed here. Um, so we can then go back to our synchronous model. Um, one other thing that I hadn't done was this 25mm cutout in here. So again, um, let's just go back to our home tab. And I'm going to come off that base reference plane. So if you hold still and right mouse click, you can choose your pick quick. And that orientates it so I can then pick up off this here and just paste this in with a fixed width and come in here somewhere. It's probably a little bit too wide so I can just click and drag that in. Uh, just to ensure that that is centered. And that thickness is correct. So from here, um, I can do my cutout. Again, hold the control key down, right mouse click, and come through. One last dimension. So if I go off this edge here, And this needs to be 40, making sure that the right hand end is the one that's moving. So we want that at 40, and then that drops in. So um, this has been created in synchronous, and um, you know you, we can see that uh, we can move things around if we want to. We can do a fence selection on here, and um, make this longer so you can move multiple features at one time if I wanted to I could have um, included that cutout as well so you can see that that's now selected and I can put that in and you can see that that lengthens that as well so um, Finally, because I've put this cutout in, you can see that the flat pattern is not um, up to date, so we just need to um, recreate that. And go back to our synchronous model. Um, if you need to create your DXF, you go up to the um, application menu and you've got to save as, uh, save as flat. So that uses the flat pattern that we have, and um, then you can just save that out, and I'll take the same name. So that will be just the uh, DXF file name. And what that does is it um, creates a flat pattern um, layers on it that has up and down bend, bend lines on them, um, which can be used in your um, CNC. So from here, let's um, save this. So we go uh, save. So I'm going to put this into a temp folder. Call this bracket. So from here, we can then go into the application button go new and you want to take the drawing of the active model i'm just using the standard um, draft template so that brings that into here um, if i want to um, place this i shall place that on the drawing um, i'm just going to come in here 
and change my drawing shape. So from here, I will go in and create a principal view. the isometric view up there. So this one here, I'm going to um, just reduce down in size. And I can then go over to here and choose shaded with edges. So you now see a grey box around it, which means that it's out of date. So you just update your views. And that's what you end up with. Um, then we can just dimension the part as uh, normal so I need to just change the scaling on that and you can start dimensioning as you need to to create the part. So hopefully that's helpful and um, shows you how uh, simple it is to create sheet metal components. One other option available in creating the part is to use a contour flange. So if I open up a new um, sheet metal document and go to the line command, I'm going to lock to this plane here and um, start from the center. I'm going to draw my 80 length at the bottom. Right mouse click to restart, come back to the starting point, go 40 up, and then 40 to the left. So that gives me my rough profile. And then if I use the contour flange, select the item, and then uh, choose which direction. So if I hit the shift key, I can go in both directions. So I want to go 60. If I hit the tab key, that allows me to reset the um, thickness. And I can also go into here, override the value here, and put in my bend radius. So go OK on that, and you'll see that the bends flip. And then I can choose which way I want it to go. So I'm just going to go down. So just click and from there we can then just go on and complete things as we did before. So you now we can pick up off here, change our options to open and then uh, 3.5 and 10 and material outside, bend outside. So yeah, you can just create it and it sort of just jumps in a lot quicker than um, having to do the individual flanges.